and my father has been one of the biggest influences in my kind of life in, in uh, getting me to believe that I could do anything I, I put my mind to or do anything I could and I never felt the need to kind of have a proper job or anything like that. Um, the head of the art school in Dunbarry when I went there was a gentleman a man called Trevor Scott who allowed me to make films. I mean, uh, I was supposed to be doing fine art and doing painting and suddenly he found, somehow he found a way for me to be able to, to make films. Um, and that's kind of amazing and I hugely thankful. The third person um, is a Scottish filmmaker called Bill Douglas who made a series of films called the Bill Douglas Trilogy. He came to the film school that I went to in Beaconsfield to tutor me and two other people. And Bill actually taught me about writing and, and and showed me that I could do it and made me believe that I could do it. Um, and I learned a huge amount from him. And then, you know, from working with people, you know. Um, but I would say they were the three main people. That's when you've got to keep your head and not panic as an actor, not, not, not get... Because there's so much going on in, 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 in film and so much... They're fiddling with your costume. They're putting a microphone on. They're quite trying to do your hair. They're, you have a scar down the side of your face. They're touching that up. And you've got to stand there. And the most amazing actor I've seen is stand there like that. And it's like as though it's all going... And I'm standing there and I'm concentrating on my part. And thinking, I've actually got to stab this guy in 30 seconds. I have to stab him in 30 seconds. And when they say turn over, that I can do that. Mm. And I know as a director that I've actually try to create in the best way that I can the atmosphere for you to do that. Uh, the main influence on my career, I did, it wouldn't be one person, it would have been the amateur drama group that I joined many years ago, Rainbow Factory. It was, uh, it was designed, I was only a child, I'm from Belfast as you can hear in my accent, but it was designed to bring young Protestant and Catholic children together uh, as a cross-community project and that was the biggest influence in my career because that got me bitten by the bug of acting and, I, and I've remained an actor ever since really. I'd made um, a short film, 40 minute film, film school that, that was shown. They had a, a school always had these kind of gala screenings at BAFTA and Piccadilly. And I was lucky that night that a lot of kind of the white people in the industry came. And uh, there, there, there was an organisation that were called British Screen at the time that gave money to writers and, and directors to write and make films and I just knocked on the door and kept going and eventually they gave me the money to write a script um, and I eventually found a producer that wanted to make it um, and I made that, that my first feature film um, in 1989. I remember from film school the first thing I did was a feature, a low budget feature film um, and it was only laterally uh, two years after that that I started to work on television because I had a film that went down and I thought you know I've got to kind of learn the craft of you know, I, I realised what I didn't know on Joyriders, the first mm -hmm. film I made, and I, I needed to learn that craft. And so, luckily, I got an opportunity, a director got sick um, on, on a show called The Bill, which was made by Thames at the time, they brought me in, um, and I directed two episodes of that, and halfway through they asked me to stay and do another two. That was my first break of television. And I, I then went with that producer to do a drama series in Scotland. And my first real break in film was, it would have had to have been Richard Attenborough's Closing the Ring, uh, where I played a young guy uh, that found a ring on Cave Hill Mountain in Belfast and tracked down the owner of the ring, who was played by Shirley MacLaine. And Christopher Plummer, Pete Postlethwaite was, was in it, and uh, Brenda Fricker played my grandmother. Um, yeah, so that was my first big break, and uh, that kind of led on to the gig, gig after gig, really. So I've been, I've been lucky enough, I'm really, really, really thankful. There's some things that don't quite sit well with you voice it say we we wouldn't really that's not how we say it yeah, you know because it, it's probably a 50 year old man that was educated in Eton yeah. writing the script and there's a young <coughs> governor in the script yeah. so it might be good to just, just kind of voice voice your opinion and say you know what we don't really say that we'll say it like this and I'm sure you would, you would go with what, what you suggest definitely and it's always a, like you know a young actor and you're in the middle of doing a scene like this and you do two takes and you'll hear the words we're moving on I will, all, I will always say to an actor but a lot of directors probably won't I'll always say when I say cut and we're moving on if you want to go again put your hand up and say I can actually do it better because in those 10 seconds we can be rolling again and you can have another go 
Well, you know, the Fingal Film Festival, it's a f- festival in its infancy, so I, I, I take it as an honour to be asked to come and do one of the first years of, of this film festival, a great honour. And uh, when I looked at the other people in the lineup, some great, great people, specialists in the field, so I thought, oh, why not? I'll, I'll, I'll jump on the bandwagon here, come down and show my support. Yeah. If, you, if you can do accents, just opening up the market that you can go and audition for, if you can do accents and you can practice accents, you walk into that room. You can walk into that room as in the accent. You don't have to tell them. When I auditioned for the HBO show, they said, do not break out into your Belfast world. Don't do it. And when I went into the room, Steve Spielberg shook my hand and said, oh, I'm going to watch your movie that you did with Richard Attenborough, Closing the Ring. And instantly I thought, well, he knows I'm from Belfast. And I looked at the casting director and I looked at him and I thought, oh, well, if I talk to him in a Texan accent, he's going to think I'm an idiot. So I went, it's nice to meet you. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Spielberg. And I thought, I've ruined it. I've ruined it from the off start. You know, and then I had to go into the, the audition thinking, they all think I'm from Belfast. And uh, I've ruined it. I've completely ruined it. And I seen the casting director looking at me and then looking down because he just distinctly told me, do not, do not speak in Belfast, in a Belfast accent when you're in this room. Just stay, stay Texan, you know. I try and write every day if I can. You know, it's a craft, and I try and write every day um, if I can. I mean, when I'm not, you know, filming, when I'm... Because a lot of my kind of um, work is divided between, you know, when I'm working, i.e. directing something I've written or not, and then in those sort of gaps, I try and write every day. Um, I sometimes don't know what... uh, where I'm kind of going to go with the script. I've often a very good idea. A lot of the ideas I'm interested in have come from real life, and so I have a base to sort of start from, um, or you know, a particular uh, kind of sequence of events that I might be interested in. I mean, I have a project that's uh, that I want to make that's about a painter whose work I've loved for a long time, and so I've had to find that story. So on that journey of six months that I've you know, that I may kind of take. It may take me a while to get to kind of what the story is, but I know it's a story about that painter. And somehow within her, say, life, I'm trying to find a dramatic story that's interesting, to say something as a, with her as, you know, how women can be strong and how uh, we've kind of got to kind of back away. People often say I make films about outsiders. I think I do that quite a lot of the time. And people that don't have a voice or that need a voice um, and have a struggle, they tend to be the kind of things that I've written about. The main thing as a director is walk around, don't nail yourself to the floor, you know, just, you know, the thing is you're kind of, you know, nail yourself and then suddenly you're here. And you're, yeah, that, there's nothing wrong with that, but have a wander around because actually when, uh, I know that, you know, when you start to walk around, you see, look at that, you get his sort of kind of, uh, it's when you play people that are alive because you're kind of worried about what they're going to think and you don't really want to go and do an impression of, of someone that's still out there, especially someone that's in the public, you know, the public eye, like for Bono, Bono or, or R.V. Bergen that, that was in, you know, a, a real marine that was in the Pacific and stuff. So you, they're pretty big boots to fill and you don't want to look like you're what, prancing around doing your best Bono impression, the best R.V. Bergen impression. You want to get more get the essence of them. So I think it's uh, it's challenging to play someone that is that's still around because you might end up looking like a bad actor, which, which that's the last thing you want to look like, you know. Traditionally, and I mean, it's still the case, it is hard for girls, without doubt. Um, I was very fortunate when people saw my work, and I, you know, was in England in the kind of early 80s and 90s, the name Ashton suddenly somehow conjured up a male name. The first interview I had at the BBC, I kind of go through the door, it's for one off play for today. And I went through the door to the producer and I said, darling, the interview's for Alice and I'm the the corridor. And I left. <laughs> and I went down the corridor and I thought, Christ, I hope, you know. Knocked on the door again and I said, no, my name is Ashley. And I went, oh. 
and I knew I was never going to get that job. But so I was kind of fortunate that a lot of the work I did was kind of, um, and I mean, quite male orientated, quite um, quite gritty and quite tough. And so I kind of got that reputation. And and then you know a lot of luck. A lady called Linda Plant. I worked with Linda for two years. I learned so much from working with Linda about writing and about directing and and I was very fortunate that you know she was a huge part of my career for you know, three years and a huge part of my career period.